In this video here, we're going to be doing a stock analysis on Palantir. Now, this is more of a stock update. I covered this company a couple of months ago. Just wanted to touch base and see what we still think about this business. Let's load it up in the stock research tool and get a better idea of what's going on. So here's a stock research tool. Now, what we're going to look at is the financial valuations category, which allows me to grade this company out of 10, going through 10 key categories from the balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow statement, loving this price decrease, but I like it when prices go down because that means the company has less risk in, in terms of getting into it. Our five year PE ratio, folks, we don't actually have that data. Nope. One, because the company is extremely new, and two, in a 12 months category, we can see that it's in the negatives because this company doesn't really make that much money. So zero there. Current ratio though is looking phenomenal. We're sitting at 4.38. We want this number to be 1.5 or higher. That would indicate to us that that company has enough assets on hand to cover their liabilities. So sitting at 4.38 folks with Palantir is phenomenal. However, it gets a little bit more rough as we go along. Negative return on equity average. Nope. We want this over 15% and we, unfortunately we don't have that. No EPS growth. No. Nope. We don't actually have the, the data for that. Not looking too hot. Now debt to equity, surprisingly, is extremely low. It's incredibly low, sitting at 9.61. Now we want this number to be underneath 50%. That would indicate to us that the company's building the business through equity and not through debt. When a company is building their business through debt and using that kind of leverage, the creditors can put a stronghold on them and it doesn't get pretty folks, especially now that interest rates are rising for all these tech companies that are currently existing. The waters are going to be shaken up a little bit going forward. That's what I believe. Now where things get super ugly, share dilution sitting at 100%. We want no nope. business ideally to be decreasing the amount of shares outstanding. 100% increase is horrendous. We want to be able to own more of this business. And if the company's just dishing out more shares, there's more owners involved and there's less of the pie for you. We don't want to see that folks. Unfortunately, Palantir is diluting you. Five year net nope. income growth. Unfortunately, it's unavailable. Free cash flow growth is sitting at 700% increase. Okay, that's pretty good. However, keep that in mind. Let's see what's going on. Free cash flow. Let's go annual. See what that looks like. Okay. It increased nonetheless. Still incredibly low. That's going to change over the next little while when that gets reported. More so concerned about this return on invested. I mean, I'm not too thrilled about this. I mean, I'm, I'm glad it's up, but I'm anticipating neg negative numbers. A five-year return on invested capital average, not looking too great. Negative 36%. Nope. And doesn't get any better in a 12, 12 months category either. We want to see this number over 10%, and we don't have that on any front. So not looking too good, folks. This is zero there. Five-year revenue growth, though, is up. 53% is phenomenal. We want to see that number just generally increasing. And you know what? That's a pretty high number. I thoroughly enjoy that. So sitting at a four out of 10 overall, I this is a fail for me. Like this is a four out of 10, this is 40%. I don't know if I can really recommend Palantir just based off the metrics I'm seeing here. Granted, we don't have some data for it just because it's a new company. However, my personal investing philosophy is I like looking at companies that have been on, on the market for five years or more, because usually within five years, you can see if the company has proven itself and if it has grown and kind of just found some sort of rhythm. I can't say that Palantir is a terrible business. However, I just think it's a new business and it needs to prove itself first before investing any capital. However, we are going to do the full price analysis folks and to determine what a fair price for this company would be. Let's jump into our price analysis. Now, folks, if you are enjoying the video so far and enjoying this software, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. You can find that just down here, down below. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. This software that allows me to analyze companies within an instant will be available to my subscribers. It's on route. It's coming soon. And I can't wait to announce it and show it to the rest of the world and you, the viewer that are watching. So 
jumping into this price analysis, I'm gonna fill out all these lovely boxes. We're doing a 10 year analysis. And I'll touch base with you in just a quick second and I'll explain why I filled out these boxes the way I did. So stay tuned for that. Okay, folks, so here's what I did. I did 20, 21 and 22% revenue growth. Now, if you know me, I like to be conservative as possible. I just can't justify them growing a 50%, 40% a year. It just doesn't make sense to me. Now, profit margin, this is where things kind of get a little bit messy, to say the least. I had to go 5, 10, and 15% because we actually don't have a profit margin. I don't know what this company makes. So I'm speculating there, as well as in our free cash flow margin, I'm doing 10, 15, and 20% sticking within the the positive numbers that we have in our one year something i rarely ever do because our five year numbers technically is negative 10. price to free cash flow moderately aggressive with the 14 16 18 assumptions as well as our pe ratio sitting at 16 18 and 20 because in 10 years it, it should make sense it should be hopefully at least around this 20 mark if it's around 16 that'd be phenomenal now going into our desired return we're gonna jump it at 13%. Now here's here's the thing, folks. Average calculation comes out to be 9.28. Conservative average is four $4.44, moderate at 8.94, and aggressive at 14.46. So here's the thing: if you agree with these assumptions, then you might be at a buy all day, granted if you believe predominantly these numbers. Now I would stick more so closer to this category because that makes the most amount of sense. However, we're speculating a lot here, folks. We are speculating on the profit margin. We're speculating on the free cash flow margin because we actually haven't seen those numbers yet, as well as the PE ratio is in the negatives. So going forward, going forward with this business, you're gonna have to assume that starting today, everything's going to be turned around. Everything's going to turn around, and we're going to get some positive numbers going forwards on their balance sheets. Is that possible? It's possible. Is it probable? Not really. Just based off how this company's been progressing. And listen, I'm not blaming the business practice. However, I just believe just because it's a new business, it's going to take some time. How much time? I don't know. I'm not a fortune teller. I, I I don't have a crystal ball. But these are some things you gotta just keep in mind. Now, if you see this price, there's a listen, today, at the time of recording this video, there's been a massive sell-off in this company. It gets down to four dollars and you hang on to it, it might be worth a strong buy. What's my opinion on opinion on Palantir? I'm avoiding this. It's a ranking low on the financial evaluations category. It's mispriced and there's no positive profit margin or free cash flow margin. Once I start seeing some positive numbers, this is a company I will definitely start digging into a lot more deeper and seeing what a realistic price would be. As an investor, you can't deal with what ifs. You have to look at what could be. Now, those two statements sound similar. However, one is dealing off of just speculation. The other one is dealing with evidence that has already been previously given. So in the case of Palantir, we're able to, let's say, do 40% revenue growth, 50% revenue growth. So to see 20 or 21% revenue growth, that would make sense to me because they're able to hit these numbers. I, I can't put positive numbers if I haven't, if I only have negative numbers. That's the what ifs. We don't want that. Anyways. That's my analysis on Palantir. Write down your thoughts below. If you want to see a company and analyze, write it down in, in the comment box below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.